Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the Dell Precision R7920 workstation. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on RAM. Let's get going. Hey, thanks for stopping by today. I just want to a little bit more about the Dell Precision R7920. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like, smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's hop in. This video is going to be dedicated to memory. So we're going to start with just general specs to help you get started. We're going to go over the different speeds, the different sizes. We're going to talk about the different types and what is the max. And then at the end, we're going to show you how to physically install. So let's hop into all the good stuff. All right, let's start with the general specs. So it takes DDR4 memory. There are 24 DIMM slots inside. You can use a number of different speeds as low as 2133, 2400, 2666, 2933, or all the way up to 3200. I will note 3200 is going to clock down no matter what processor you put in it. 2933 is the true fastest you can get, and you will need to have a second gen scalable proc in order to do 2933. And the fastest you can get with first gen is actually going to be 2666, and most of those are going to clock down to 2133 or 2400. So just know going into it that depending on the processor you have will depend on the max speed. And if you're a little bit confused by that, hey, just message our sales team and we can definitely help help you walk through to figure out what's the right upgrade for you or what's the right RAM kit for you based on the proc that you do have. All right, let's talk about the sizes. All right, so sizes are 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, 32 gig, 64 gig, 128 gig, 256 gig, or all the way up to 512 gigabyte. All right, so the types of RAM, you can use three types of RAM. You have ECC register, known as an RDIM. You have load reduced, which is known as an LRDIM. And technically, you have Intel Optane, which is going to be a more obscure one. So let's start with the main two, really. You're going to have ECC registered. ECC registered will max out at 1.5 terabytes using 24 64 gigs at 2933 speed with your second gen scalable. So that'll be the max on the RDIM side, whereas LRDIMs, you can get double the scalability, get three terabytes using 2428 gigabytes, again at 2933 speed with the second gen scalable proc. When you use Intel Optane, you can actually get up to 7.5 terabytes dropping in one Intel Optane per channel. So you're going to have 12 Intel Optanes, and then you can throw in 12 load reduced modules that are 128 gigabytes, and that way you'll get all the way up to 7.5 terabytes. But that's the max that you're going to be able to do with load reduced. So, or excuse me, with uh, Intel Optane. So those are your three choices. And uh, realistically, load reduced is, if you ask me my personal preference, I'm a big, big fan of the uh, 64 gig and 128 gig load reduced modules if you're talking about trying to get good, good scalability. All right, now that we know all about the, the memory, the sizes, the speeds, the types, what's compatible, let's show you how to physically install it. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. Be right back. All right, having my ESD gear, we are safe to work on our machine. All we're going to need is our RAM module. So let's go ahead and toss these to the side, pop our latch, just like any server you've really been in before. So you will notice that you're going to have your air baffle that's going to be uh, covering the two CPUs and the 24 DIMM slots. So we're going to need to remove this air baffle right now. So simply we're just going to take this and lift this straight up and put it to the side. So now that we've done that, you can see there's CPU 1 and CPU 2 and the 24 DIMM slots. Now, you do not have to remove the uh, the air raffle here, or excuse me, the, um, the fan bank here, but I'm going to go ahead and remove our fans, okay? I'm going to take these out so that you guys have just a better view of the system as a whole so you can kind of see the all the DIMM slots. So, all right, now that we are in... Um, CPU 1 is going to control the 12 DIMM slots over here. CPU 2 is going to control the 12 DIMM slots over here. As we mentioned, there's two DIMMs per memory channel. So white is the start of the memory channel and black is the second. So if you're only, for instance, installing 12 DIMMs, you would actually install them in all the white modules first before you install them in any of the blacks, assuming you have two CPUs. And the reason being is you want to have a nice, even distribution, okay? You don't want one of your memory channels overloaded while your others aren't doing anything. You just want all your memory channels to have a nice balance so that you have the perfect performance for what you're putting inside. So that's really important as far as uh, utilizing the channels. So you're asking, okay, well, where do I put the module? That's what I really came to watch. Well, that's what we'll show you right now. All right, so the first thing I personally like to do, I like to pop open all of my tabs, all right? I just like to have them all open, just do it at once, so that way I don't have to do it while I'm holding modules or have any issues, so I just go through and I pop everything open and just get that whole process started. Now, you do need to be careful. You don't want to be pushing too hard and break one of these things off. That's always a pain, right? So uh, we've got them all open and we're good to go. So the start of 
the very first channel is going to be A1 right here. So I'm actually going to close that in. So this white slot right there is A1. And then you come over here, this is A2, A3, and you're going to circle over here, and this is going to be A4, A5, and A6. So it, the first six modules you install would be just like that. Now, assuming you had two CPUs, you're actually going to swing over here now, and you're going to go to B1, which is right here, and then you're going to go to B2, which is right there, and then you're going to go to B3. Then you're going to swing back around over here, and this is going to be B4, B5, B6. So those would be the first 12 DIMM slots, and then you're going to swing back around over here, and you're going to do A7, A8, A9, come back around over here, A10, A11, A12. Then you're going to swing back around over here, B7, B8, B9, B10, B11, B12. So that is the order right there. So that would be the order that you're going to go in. So now we're going to pop them back open again. Let's just keep closing them and opening them. It's so much fun. Um, so we're going to open them back up. Uh, and now I'm going to show you a couple other things. So one of the things that I always view as important is, because uh, it's an easy mistake to make, is you got to be careful when you're holding your module here. You're going to notice right in the middle, and actually not in the middle, that's kind of the whole point, there is a key. This little notch right here known as a key is not perfectly centered. So depending on which way you face your module, you could actually have it facing the wrong way and damage the module, even worse, damage the dim slot, which means you could possibly have to replace the motherboard. So just make sure you line it up uh, properly. So first one we're going to go to is A1. We've got everything lined up properly. So you look, I've got it set down. I'm not holding it, but this module is not inserted. So you need to hear these two clicks. And those two clicks, you see the white tab has hooked to the side of the module. So right here on the side, if you notice, it's got these little carved out notches. So the tab hooks it up and pushes the leads firmly in to our slot. So it's very, very important that we have that done. One of the most common user errors that we have, and we see it way too often, unfortunately, is that uh, someone will have a, a tab just sl slightly sticking out and they think that they have a bad module. And we'll tell people, hey, when you're troubleshooting, one of the easiest things that you can do is to rotate your modules around. And the reason we say rotate the ro modules around is because, one, if you do have a bad module, then the error will follow the module to whatever channel you put it in. Or, two, you just didn't have it seated properly, and now you just seat it properly, and the error goes away. And it was never an error. It was just not seated properly. I'd say that's uh, probably nine times out of ten when someone thinks they have a bad module. We see that, again, far, far too often. Um, so it's something that's a common user error at home that we always tell people just to keep an eye on. All right, so those are our first six modules. So in real time, you can do this a little bit faster if you're not talking, um, but that is what you would do. So now, again, we're going to come back around over here to B1, and I'm going to start just putting them in, and I'll pop them all in at the end, and B2, B3, and then swing back over here to B4, Five and B6. So sometimes I'll do this and then come back around and just knock them all out at one time. Okay, so now we've got our first 12 modules in. And I'm just going to keep on going in the correct order. Alright, so now we're just going to make sure everything is firmly installed. So we get all of our clicks going right now.
All right, so now we have upgraded using 24 modules. Uh, this is one of the things we highly recommend when you're looking to increase the life or extend the life and increase the performance of your server. Upgrade the RAM, upgrade the SSDs. These are two of the easiest things to do to extend the life and just basically have way better performance. And if you're looking for any custom built servers or any upgrades, please email us at sales at cloudnews.com. That's sales at cloudnews.com. We would love the opportunity to earn your data center, your home lab business. We carry a ton of GPU servers. We carry workstations, rack mounts, blades, you name it. So again, we'd love the opportunity to earn your business sales at cloudnews.com. Thanks for stopping by guys. Take care.